everyone and welcome to our science powerpoint presentation before starting our topic i would like to describe you what is science science is a systematic enterprise that builds and organizes knowledge in the form of testable explanations and predictions about the universe science happens when people seek to discover and learn about the world and their place in that world now i would like to tell you about science in action Science was well developed in India since ancient times, from the fine construction of houses in Mohenjo-daro and Harappa to sending a successful satellite to Mars. India has achieved a lot in the sector of science, and more are yet to come. There are three branches of science: biology, chemistry, and physics. Today we are going to talk about a specific branch that is chemistry. Chemistry, the science which deals with the properties. Positions and structures of substances, the transformations they undergo, and the energy that is released or absorbed during these processes. The next topics can be explained by Arichit and Shankar. A mixture is a substance which consists of two or more element or compound not chemically combined together. So today we will focus about the topic separating the components of a mixture. There are many physical and chemical ways through which we can separate the components of a mixture. We can separate the components of a mixture by using processes like filtration, evaporation, sublimation by using a separating funnel, distillation, fractional distillation, etc. Now the first sub topic will be explained by Prakriti. So at first we will show how can we obtain colored component from blue or black ink. First, we take a beaker and fill it half with water. About 5 ml of ink is put in a china dish. The china dish containing the ink is placed over the mouth of the beaker, which is then kept on a tripod stand. We now start heating the beaker with a burner. Soon, the water in beaker starts boiling to form steam. This steam heats the ink in the china dish. Due to this heating, the water present in ink starts evaporating gradually. When all the water has evaporated from ink, we start heating. We will find that a small amount of a solid colored material is left in the china dish. This colored material is the dye which was present in the ink. In conclusion, this experiment shows that ink is not a single substance, it is a mixture. The ink is a mixture of dye in water. And this is the dye plan. Now we are moving to our next topic. How can we separate cream from milk? Milk is a suspension of tiny droplets of oil in a watery liquid. The milk is put in a closed container in a big centrifuge machine. And when the centrifuge machine is turned on, the milk is rotated at a very high speed in the container. Due to this, the milk separates into cream and skimmed milk. Cream being the lighter flows over the skimmed milk. Thus, the cream is separated from the milk by the process of centrifugation. The process of centrifugation is also used in washing machines to squeeze out water from the wet clothes and make them dry. And this is the diagram. Now, our next topic is how can we separate a mixture of two immiscible liquids? We can separate the mixture of two immiscible liquids by using a separating funnel. With the help of principal immiscible liquids, separate out in layer depending upon their densities. Now, the process will be explained by my friend Krithan. The process, the mixture of two immiscible liquid, water and kerosene is put in a separating funnel and allowed to stand for some time. The mixture separates into two layers according to the densities of the liquid. The heavier liquid or the denser liquid water forms the lower layer whereas the lighter liquid forms the upper layer kerosene. On opening the stop cup of the separating funnel, the lower layer of heavier liquid water comes out fast and collect in a beaker. When the lower layer of heavier liquid has completely run off, the stop cup is closed. The lighter liquid in the upper layer is collected in a separate beaker by opening the stop cup again. So we can conclude that in this way we separate the mixture of two immiscible liquids. And this is the diagram. Our fourth topic is how can we separate a mixture of common salt and camphor. We use the process of sublimation to separate the mixture of common salt and camphor. Now the process will be explained by Prajukta. This with the help of an example. The mixture of common salt and camphor is taken in a china dish and placed on the tripod stand. 
The china dish is covered with an inverted glass funnel. A loose cotton plug is put in the upper one end of the funnel to prevent the camphor vapor from escaping. The china dish is heated by using a burner. On heating, the mixture camphor changes into white vapors. These vapors rise up and get converted into solid camphor on coming in contact with the cold inner walls of the funnel. In this way, pure camphor collects on the inner sides of the funnel in the form of sublimate and can be removed. Common salt does not change into vapors on heating, so it remains behind in the china dish. The mixture has been separated into its two components, camphor and common salt. Ammonium chloride, iodine, camphor, naphthalene and anthracene can be separated from non-volatile substances like common salt, sand, iron fillings, chalks, etc. by the process of sublimation. This is the diagram. Our next topic is quite interesting. Is the dye in the blacking a single color? Let us understand this with the help of an activity. Take a thin and long strip of filter paper. Draw a pencil line on it, about 3 cm from the end. Put a small drop of black ink on the filter paper. Strip at the center of the pencil line. Let the ink dry. When the drop of the ink has dried, the filter paper strip is lowered into a tall glass jar containing some water in its lower part. The filter paper is held vertically by attaching it upper end to the glass rod with celery. Though the lower end of the paper strip should dip in the water, but the pencil line should be above the water level in the jar. The water gradually rises up the filter paper strip by capillary action. As water moves up the paper strip, it takes along the dries present in it. The dye, which is more soluble in water, dissolves first, rises faster and produces a colored spot on the paper at the higher position. The less soluble dyes dissolve a little later, rise lower and form colored spot at low height. In this way, all the dyes present in the black ink get separated. When the water reaches near the top end of the filter paper strip, the paper strip is removed from the jar and dried. The paper with separate color spots is called a chromatogram. We can conclude that the black ink has three different dyes mixed in it. This is the diagram. Earlier we showed the process of separating two immiscible liquid. Now we are going to show how can we separate two miscible liquid. This can be shown with the help of following the process. The process is as follows. The boiling point of acetone is 56 degrees Celsius and boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. The mixture of water and acetone is heated in a distillation flask heated with a fractionating column. When the mixture is heated, both the acetone and water form vapors as their boiling point approach. The acetone vapor and water vapor rise up in the fractionating column. The upper part of the fractionating column is cooler. So as the hot vapor rise up in the column, they get cooled, condense and trickle back into the distillation flask. As the experiment goes on, the fractionating column warms up by the heat released by the condensed vapor. After some time, a temperature gradient is created in the fractionating column. The temperature at the top of the column being much less than at its bottom. When the temperature at the top of the fractionating column reaches 56 degrees Celsius, then the acetone vapor passes into the condenser, gets cooled and collects in a beaker kept at the other end of the condenser. The acetone water mixture is kept boiling at such a rate that the thermometer shows the boiling point of acetone. In this way, all the acetone distills over and gets separated. It is collected as the first fraction. These are the diagrams. Well, we have discussed how to separate a mixture of two liquids. Now we will discuss how can you obtain different gases from air. Air is a homogeneous mixture and can be separated into its component for fractional distillation. The flow diagram shows the steps of the process. If we want oxygen gas 
from here. We have to separate out all the other gases present in air. The air is compressed by increasing the pressure and is then cooled by decreasing the temperature to get liquid air. The liquid air is allowed to warm up slowly in a fractional distillation column where gases get separated at different heights depending upon their boiling points. This is the diagram. obtain pure copper sulfate from an impure sulfate. Take about 10 grams of impure copper sulfate and dissolve it in minimum amount of water in a china dish to make copper sulfate solution. About 5 ml of blue ink is put in a china dish. Filter the copper sulfate solution to remove insoluble impurities. Heat the copper sulfate solution gently on a water bath to evaporate water and obtain a saturated solution then stop heating. Allow the hot saturated solution of copper sulfate to cool slowly. Crystals of pure copper sulfate are formed. Impurities remain behind in the solution. Take the copper sulfate crystals from solution by filtration and dry. This is the diagram of the process. The application of the process are purification of soil that we get from sea water, separation of crystal of alum from impure samples. Last but not the least, we should know how the water we use for various purposes is made suitable for us to use. This is the process used. Water from a river is pumped by pumping station into a large reservoir called sedimentation tank. This water is allowed to stand in the sedimentation tank for some time. During this time, many of the insoluble substances present in water settle down at the bottom of the tank. From the sedimentation tank, water is sent to a loading tank. In a loading tank, some alum is added to water. The suspended clay particles in water get loaded with alum particles, become heavier and settle down. This process removes the suspended clay particles from water. The water then passes through a filtration tank. It contains three layers, fine sand layer at the top, coarse sand layer in the middle and gravel at the bottom layer. When the water passes through the layer of sand and gravel, even the strong suspended particles and the other material in water get removed. The clear water is then passed into the chlorination tank. A little chlorine gas is added to water. Chlorine is added to water to kill the germs present in it. This is called disinfecting the water. The water now becomes fit for drinking. The clean and disinfected water is then pumped by the pumping station into high storage tanks. From the high storage tanks, water is supplied to homes and factories through a network of pipeline. This is the diagram of the process. Conclusion, we learned that because of the different physical and chemical properties of mixture, it is possible for us to separate a solution into its original components. In our several experiments, we used chemical and physical means to partially and wholly separate the components in our lab. Thank you for spending your valuable time for watching our PowerPoint presentation. Thank you. Thank you.